Welcome to FOD Overdrive, the podcast that keeps you up on your Friday nights. We're a three-man team that also has a weekly Sunday conservative terrestrial program. Say that three times fast. From 3 to 5 p.m. on 94.9 News Now. And stimulating talk, that's WJJF on your FM dial in Connecticut, Long Island, and Rhode Island. Freedom on Deck. To live stream the station and listen to our program, go to freedomondeck.com and click listen live or listen to all of our back shows of Freedom on Deck and FOD Overdrive on the site. You can get daily updated news, contributions from Chet Martin, that's me, Lee Elsie from The Lee Elsie Show, Julio Rivera from The Reactionary Times, and Alex Newman from The New American. I'm Chet Martin, joined by Brian Bro. Brian, say hello to the good people. Hello, the United States. And C.V. Burton, what's up? Hello, mobile sentient entities. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, anyway, guys, um, were you watching the celebration of the ticker Tate parade on Wednesday for the women's soccer team where Megan Rapinoe, if that's how you say it, yelled out, New York... You're the motherfucking best. And I'm not trying to start the show off with an obscenity. That's what she actually said. Throughout the week, this women's soccer team really, uh, I don't think that they could sink to any new lows, Brian. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch any of the games. I didn't pay them any homage. Uh, I did not watch the ticker tape parade um, because I don't care about people who disrespect our country or the flag that so many men and women have died for, uh, giving her the right to spit on it. So, um, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to watch that. Um, Spe- speaking of yeah. spitting on it, Brian, that display that they had where they were doing some sort of chant and ritual dance for Instagram, the her teammate, actually put the flag on the ground and Megan stomped on it. And somebody else, I, I think her last name was O'Hare, O'Hara, actually came and picked the flag up. So I give her credit. But CV, what do you think about this kind of display from an athletic sports team like this? Shouldn't they keep their politics inside their own home? Yes, but I prefer not to have, have any thoughts at all about them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm waiting yeah. for I'm waiting for frisbee to become an international sport. <laughs> it's about as exciting as soccer. I'll, I'll <laughs> I agree guess not. with you there. So um, I wanted to get to this story. Everybody's talking about Jeff Epstein on Wednesday. Labor Secretary Alex Acosta addressed the media over his handling of the Jeff Epstein pedophile case in 2008 that resulted in a non-prosecution agreement. Instead of giving Epstein life in prison, instead, Epstein served 13 months behind bars in a work release program that allowed him to spend six days a week in his office. Now that's justice! Oh yeah! Um, My personal opinions on Acosta, I'm going to leave for this weekend's show. But, this Sunday's show, rather, on Terrestrial. This story piqued my interest, and I I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Investigative journalist Conchita Sarnoff was on Fox News, and she was with Shannon Bream. And this was Monday night. And she stated that there were underage girls on accused pedophile Jeff Epstein's plane when former President Bill Clinton traveled on it at times without his Secret Service detail. Fox News's Lucas Melkonis reports that Sarnoff is the executive director of of Alliance to Rescue Victims of Trafficking, and is the author of the book Traffic King. Get it? Traffic King, the Jeffrey Epstein Mm -hmm. case. The Fox News segment followed the recent developments in the Epstein case that have occurred after the financer was arrested again on Saturday on child sex trafficking charges. Sarnoff made the remarks in response to the following statement from Clinton on Monday. President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeff Epstein pleaded guilty to in Florida some years ago or those with which he had been recently charged in New York. She said, I have read too much information. I've spoken to too many people on the inside 
I actually attempted to interview Clinton, but he did not agree to do so. And I know from the pilot logs that these are pilot logs that you know were written by different pilots at different times. That Clinton went, he was a guest of Epstein's 27 times. Many of those times, Clinton had his Secret Service with him, and many times he did not. Almost every time that Clinton's name is on the pilot logs, there are underage girls with these initials. Now, Brian, a lot of the uh, the left-leaning sites and liberals in general are, are saying, well, you know, Donald Trump was friends with him, too. First of all, Donald Trump actually banned this guy from his uh, from his his club, his resort, his 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 golf, whatever you call it, golf yeah, resort. Yeah, Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago. And, yep. um, and what Trump said is that basically they had a bad falling out, and she says, Sornov here says, that Trump's name never appears on these flight logs. So he never went to this island. I want to get that out of the way for everybody. I know everybody out there on the left is trying to pin this to the president. It's not going to work. But it does work when you're pinning it to an ex-president. you got to wonder, Brian, if President Clinton was on these planes with underage girls, if you saw something like that going on, wouldn't if you were innocent, wouldn't you say, get me the hell off this plane, I'm not going with you? Or uh, you, hey, you certainly wouldn't leave your Secret Service behind. Exactly. Well, that's, that's, that's a great point. And there's a couple of other interesting developments that I've seen. I've seen uh, several photos of uh, good old Barry, Barack Obama, on a boat with Jeff Epstein and some young Asian girls. Uh, and I didn't see Michelle anywhere around. Um, and uh, and I don't know if those photos are 100% legit, but they look very legit to me. Mm. Um, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, is President Trump did uh, kick him out of the resort. He did not say why, but other people that have worked in the resort that have gone unnamed um, have said it was because that he, you know, he would bring these young girls around the resort and things like that. And people would complain. And some of the w people that worked there, some of the wait staff and the bartenders and, and, and whatnot um, had been harassed by him. So Donald Trump had to kick him out. And this is way before he was president. Oh, well yeah. before. And, you know, so so there's been a couple of interesting developments that have come out of this. And, uh, you know, the Barry one I thought was it was was great. Um, but, you know, the other thing that I found interesting that came out was that Acosta um, allegedly his bosses, his upper uh, echelons and the people that he had to report to told him to squash this thing. To yeah. let it go. And so that's why such a light sentence back 15 years ago. So if that is true, I would love to know who his boss was that told him to squash it um, and to give him such a light sentence. Because if that's the case, then he was he was he was obeying a direct order from somebody that was higher in command than he was at the time. Correct. Right. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's so that's a lot of lot of lot of twists and turns that have come out of this case. Let me tell you though, he is one sick sob. I read the New York Post uh, article on him the other day, and the uh, the way they describe things of him bringing girls to his penthouse and how he was uh, having other girls um, that he would pay two to three four hundred dollars to come up and give him massages. Uh, in his penthouse, he would actually turn around and have them recruit other girls that were yep. between the ages of 13 and 16 and that he would masturbate uh, while they were massaging him and that he would grope them and fondle them and all types of, of crazy things. Uh, there was uh, rape allegations and and all types of, uh, of really depraved stuff. This guy is a real sicko and really should hang. CV, I, we really, we really need to bring back public hanging. I seriously I, think that we I really do. I, I agree with you, CV. What do you make out of uh, the Clinton dynamic here, and what other types of names do you think are going to drop, whether it be in Hollywood or uh, in in politics? Basically, what I'm asking you is, do you think think there's going to be a big bombshell where we like, we're like, holy cow, look at these names, like Richard Branson or or any of these type of. Uh, of hot shots throughout the world. 
Well, I can't believe that Dershowitz is on the list. I, I read his books, and he's pretty intelligent. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. So that that surprised me. But uh, insider knowledge, you know, says that there are you know a lot of prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, prime ministers, and world leaders, and it, it's all going to come out in the wash, you know. But um, as far as Bill Clinton is concerned, you know, there's there's evidence that he's flew on the Lolita Express 27 times where he signed his mm -hmm. name. But some say that he didn't sign his name all the time. That Sometimes he just used initials. So he could have been right. on that plane a lot more frequently than even 27 times. And the, the thing that's astonishing is that Epstein has like these compounds, these uh, – Mansion fortresses in Manhattan, Palm Beach, Florida, New Mexico, with giant walls all around them, even in Paris. So why the hell does he need uh, this this 70-acre island in the middle of the ocean? What the heck is he doing over there? You know what I mean? It must that, be particularly, that's... particularly egregious, you know? And I'm, I'm thinking a lot of Satanism and a lot of ritualistic killing is going on over there. Well, that's a that's a great point. And the the pictures that came out that have surfaced of Bill Clinton with some of these uh, these upper echelon individuals on this island swimming in the waters, yeah, are really disturbing. And there's actually one picture on the plane with Bill Clinton and a very young girl, and it does not look doctored. I know you guys have seen the picture where he has his hand around her midriff. Mm -hmm. Now, what people said, I, I don't know her name off the top of my head. The picture is up on Freedom on Deck, uh, our Facebook page. But from what all, all accounts are, is that she's a 14-year-old girl. Now, this is Bill Clinton rather recently. It, 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 you can tell he's older in the picture. Yeah, and Hillary's and, been on that island a number of times, and she likes little oh, girls, that's too. What I was gonna. that's what I was going to get to. Do you think maybe this could also lead to Hillary? Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you think he's gonna? I'm gonna ask Brian this. Brian, do you think this guy ends up dead? Oh, I think he suicides himself in the next ninety days. Yeah, I agree. You, you might be right. I think. Yeah. I think he's. I think he suicides himself. I think he. 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 He has a very. Very misfortunate uh, mishap in general population because I guarantee you Hillary will make one phone call. He'll be in general pop and they'll kill him. Yep. Well, absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. They're going to put him somewhere where he will either get killed or be suicided. It's going to be like Whitey Bulger, CV. Yeah. You know, they, they fashion these shanks out of uh, toothbrushes now. You know, <laughs> be really yeah. careful, Epstein. Don't drop the soap, as I would like to say. But it's I'm on surprised that they wouldn't put somebody like him in protective. I mean, look, they did it with Manafort. I mean, Manafort was in solitary confinement, and the guy didn't really what, what some tax, uh, tax freaking uh, discrepancies. Yeah, I mean, they 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 ruined the guy's life. I mean, Jeff Epstein. This guy's got dirt on everybody. You would think that they would have the uh, you know him in uh, solitary confinement and protected custody. You know, um, they, they, a lot of people question how he made his millions. It's not just hedge funds, I don't think. I think his business is literally uh, human trafficking. I think there's a, I agree. A, I think there's a multi-billion dollar yep. industry in trafficking yep. human beings to uh, all kinds of different clientele, whether it be just oh, yeah. just your, your normal pedophilia people and then the uh, on the other side, uh, satanic scumbags and why do you I, think I, and why do you think they want that southern border open yeah why do you think they want those migrant children coming in it's easy oh, to yeah. harvest them it's e easy to sell them off in the black market and it's easy for a scumbag like jeff epstein to make billions in the human trafficking industry yeah guys look up look up and and, and 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 those listening look up down in uh, Colombia and Brazil there is a there is a, a a company down there that you can actually fly down there get on this boat they take you to a private island there's two women to every guy the, the it, it's all about sex drugs and and, and and orgies and all types of stuff look it up 
Look it up. You don't think that Jeff Epstein is supplying, you know, you know, women to places like that? Yeah. That he, you don't think that these g- young girls that are going missing in the streets of the United States that just disappear without a trace, gone. You don't think that those are being trafficked by people like Jeff Epstein and Absolutely. ending ending up on these types of in these types of places. I it think, happens every day. Yeah, I think Epstein is the human trafficking kingpin of them all. I think he needs to be. I think you got to do a little uh, waterboarding on him and find out everything he knows. Yeah, I would love for it. You know, it is uh, Donald Trump's uh, uh, Department of Justice right now, so. It would be a great thing for the president to really get to the bottom of this. You know, he has busted a lot of these sex trafficking rings up. You notice in the news, there's a lot more of that going on now. A lot more. Yep. It's something uh, our buddy Gordon Vidal talks about all the time, and it's tenfold under President Trump than it was under Barry. And what's the reason behind that? Yep. Think about it. Who did Jeff Epstein donate to? Democrats. Of course. All Democrats. Yep. I think he also uses this to blackmail very powerful people, you know, so that he, he can pull some uh, some strings regarding uh, this policy or that policy. And I bet he gets paid through the back door for that as well. You know, pulling strings and blackmailing powerful people with this. I think he videotapes everything. They're, I think they don't even realize they're being videotaped by him. Oh, I bet you they're going to find some disturbing things. I heard they did find some videos, and they haven't released the information yet of what what is on those videos. But um, hopefully we'll find out soon. Um, we'll be talking about this more on the Terrestrial Show this Sunday. So everybody keep their ears perked and tuned in to Freedom on Death. <laughs> Uh, Listen, folks, are you getting frustrated with the trusted conservative sites and magazines turning left? Do you really want to read Bill Kristol in the National Review? Is the Weekly Standard supporting our president enough? I don't think so. Instead, go to thenewamerican.com and get your subscription to the New American Magazine. Okay, online subscriptions and the regular subscription is at a good price right now. You can read pro-Trump, truly conservative contributors like our good friend to the show, Alex Newman, Bill Hahn, and so many others, go to the newamerican.com and tell them Freedom on Deck sent you. Alright. We're going to talk a little bit about Beto. You know? Beto? He's he's uh, popular with all the illegals now, right? Yeah. So, the Democrat out of Texas this week told a group of immigrants... And refugees, that would be illegal immigrants and refugees, living in, Na- <laughs> living in Nashville, Tennessee, that the U.S. was founded on the concepts of white supremacy and slavery. During a roundtable event hosted by a local organization that works with immigrants, quotations, the presidential candidate, who's doing very badly right now, pointed to his home state's history in the Confederacy while arguing that the legacy of racism persists in the U.S. institutions. I know this from my home state, said Beto. Texas, places that formed the Confederacy, that this country was founded on white supremacy. According to the Tennessean, he said, every single institution and structure that we have in this country still reflects the legacy of slavery and segregation and Jim Crow and suppression. There's a lot of ands there. Even in our democracy, he made the remarks in response to a question about how he would tackle white supremacy if elected president. I'm getting sick and tired of our country being called a racist nation. Our country is the freest nation in the world. This lunatic, does he understand prior to President Trump that there was a black man that was elected into the White House for eight years, not once, but twice, and that we now have two Muslim Congresswomen of color that shouldn't be there, but they are, many sitting members of Congress, many sitting members of the Senate that are African-American or Hispanic, 
of many different faiths. This is the only country where you'll even find that, Brian. Correct. Thank you very much. Appreciate. That's how it is. You know, and they they all want to paint this picture. You know, it's uh you know, all all the former presidents, all white supremacy, it's this, it's that, it's the kitty cat, you know, and I'm tired of it. You know, the, I'm sure the the uh pilgrims that came over and found themselves at Plymouth Rock and uh, and many of them that starved to death that first winter. I, I, that that's a whole lot of white supremacy there, good old Beto. You know, or the ones that were uh, slaughtered by the Native Americans um, that you know that found them. They were, remember there were very violent uh, Native American tribes in New England, and there were very peaceful ones as well. Um, but don't don't get it twisted that that the uh, the very violent tribes that, that were very territorial, uh, they didn't care who these newcomers were. Uh, they were dead. So, right. I mean, you know, this idea of, you know, oh, it was founded on the... No, actually, it was founded for the advancement of the Christian faith is exactly what it was... Uh, why people came here. Because they had no right to practice freedom of re- religion in England at the time. In, in Europe. So they came here for religious freedom. That's what they came here for, Beto. Um, you know, I don't know how you even respond to an idiot that only has 1% or less than 1% of the, uh, of the polls for the candidates on the loony left. Well, that's the point, Brian. And CV, it's, it, you know, Brian makes a good point. This guy's only got 1%... Or, I don't know where it's at. I know penis breath got out of the race. Uh, Swal- <laughs> Swalwell got out. Thank God. And he really does. Swalwell. If you, look, well. if you looked up penis breath in the dictionary, you will see a picture of Eric Swalwell. I, I looked myself today, and I was surprised <laughs> to see him there. But, you know, Brian's point is, is, is a good one, but I think that O'Rourke's message is the message of every candidate over on the left, except for maybe Joe Biden. And even he has been saying... You know, well, you know, we 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 have had a bad history. I I'm sorry that I worked with segregationists. Now, instead of uh, st- staying in line and saying he had to work with these people, Kamala Harris got him to get on his knees. And usually, it's Kamala getting on her knees, right? Well, it's the, <laughs> it's the very fact that um, he was he was riding a little bit of a crest in the beginning, and when he was standing on restaurant tables with his sleeves rolled up, whatever that's supposed to prove. And then, <laughs> and then he dived in in popularity, and he's got probably like a point zero one percent of any, of any poll. And I think he's trying to get back into the headlines again by saying outlandish things. And uh, it, it's so easy to debunk because it was the creation of the United States of America that destroyed slavery, and it right. also set the president around the world. And it sent a message around the world. It, this is no longer tolerated. And uh, millions of uh, 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 white Americans fought to end slavery, gave their lives. It was the bloodiest civil war ever, I think, in the, in the entire world. It was ridiculous. And, uh, and he forgets to include the fact that uh, Jim Crow laws were instituted by Democrats. Slavery Thank was, you. Slavery was fought... Four by Democrats. The KKK was started by Democrats. Well, it's so funny how they go back and try to rewrite history. And, they switch and, sides. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. I hate that one. Yeah, and you know, CV makes a, a great point about you know how bloody the Civil War, American Civil War, was. You know, in that time, they forget about all the millions of Americans who lost their lives in the Civil War fighting to free black slaves in this country. From the Democrats. To to make slavery illegal. The millions of people that lost their blood. I forget how many how many uh, people how many people died in Gettysburg on the uh, just on the battlefield of Gettysburg? 
is a hundred and something thousand I, I or, or whatever. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. It, I mean, just it's uns- it's insane. All right, Brian, good take on it. Let's get to the second uh, commercial here. So just bear with me, guys. Our new sponsors are a motorsports team. Midget Motorsports is a family-owned and operated NASCAR modified team based out of East Hampton, New York. You'll see them full-time at Riverhead Raceway, also part-time schedule. On the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, driver number four, Corey Midget, who is the head driver, entered full body cars in the Charger division at Riverhead in 2012 and won Rookie of the Year and won a total of four races in four years. It's their fourth year in the Modified. The family, Brian Sr., Michael, Brian Jr., and Corey rely on outside donations. If you're interested in helping this Trump-supporting race team, contact Brian Sr. at the number 516-236-8498. All profits go to Corey's ability to continue racing. You'll see the Freedom on Deck logo on the car this season in Connecticut and Long Island, along with their Trump sticker and flag. And how can you not love a race team that supports President Trump? You know, you gotta love them. All right. So, we couldn't go a show without talking about Miss Alexandria Alcazio Cortez. All right. Um, so, AOC has claimed that the entire U.S. Department of Homeland Security should be scrapped for the situation on the border. You know, all that toilet water that they're making them illegals drink, getting that toilet water, slurping it on up. I know (laughs) she saw it. You know, all right, so before we get into what she said, I want everybody to understand what the DHS is all about. It was founded, the DHS was, following the terrorist attacks on September 11th in 2001. Everybody remembers that fateful day. Except Less than her. two weeks. Yeah, except for her. After the attack, then President George W. Bush started an office of Homeland Security within the White House. That office became an official department of the U.S. government following the Homeland Security Act of November 2002. Everybody's along with the ride here. With its official start in March of 2003. Today... The DHS is responsible for many areas of security within the United States, including counterterrorism, Ocasio, protecting U.S. cybersecurity, Ocasio, securing the border, Ocasio, and training states to prepare against attacks, Ocasio. As the agents, as the agency settled into its role within the United States government, it became the home for many agencies, including customs and Border Protection, CBP, and Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE. These two agencies have been the center of the public debate on immigration. So, uh, Independent Journal reported that Ocasio-Cortez was said to have shouted at agents during her visit and accused the agency of maintaining unacceptable conditions for the migrants. Uh, Drinking out of toilets, that whole nine, where she was speaking out of the car. She said they were drinking out of toilets. One reporter said, did you actually see this happening? And she just rolled her window up. She's such a coon. Uh, The feud between the agencies and this congresswoman became even more hostile after there was a Facebook page of Border Patrol agents, uh, and it was found to have many sexist and threatening remarks about Cortez, which I think that was created. I, I don't I still don't believe that story during an interview with New York Radio Cortez told host David Remnick that she believes Congress should get rid of the whole Department of Homeland Security. So here's how it went. Uh, Ocasio Cortez said ICE is not under the Department of Justice. It's under the Department of Homeland Security. Remnick from uh, the radio show said, would you get rid of Homeland Security, too? And Cortez says, I think so. Brian, this is insanity. She's talking about getting rid of the agency that actually pre- prevents us from being attacked by terrorists. Well, I'll just say it like this. I don't know that I really knew much at 28 years old um, as I do now. And, um, you know, I, I when I was 28, I still was kind of trying to figure out who the heck I was, you know what I mean, as a person. Um, and, you know, the great... People of the Bronx uh, elected this moron with, you know, uh, an IQ in the double digits uh, to to quote the great C.V. Burton. I mean, she's an idiot. She is an absolute moron. And it's 
difficult to sit here and listen to her say the things that she says when she was only like nine or ten years old when 9-11 happened. You know, I mean, it, it, she's just so dumb with the things that she says. You're going to get rid of an entire agency that has so many different departments underneath it, not just these two, okay? But, I mean, you know, you're going you're gonna to get rid of all these different agencies. Where are these people going to go? You're just going to fire them? You're going to get rid of them? The great Americans serving this nation, protecting this nation, keeping it safe. Oh. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for 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 all our ports of entry? She, uh, Brian, how, how about our shipping? How about our shipping ports? We're just Brian, gonna get rid of them too. So we're Brian, just gonna let containers from China pour in with fentanyl, and maybe we'll have a dirty bomb from Iran. Why not? Let's just let it roll. Brian, she's gonna she's put him idiot. in. She's going to put them in concentration camps and make them drink toilet water. That's all. Um, oh, man. I would love. I mean, I've never hit a woman in my life, but she's one that could get a backhand. <laughs> steady now. Steady <laughs> Be now. Be careful. Steady. Uh, CV. <laughs> CV. You know, this woman was created. She was basically off the casting couch, right? She, a casting call. They created this woman. She gets yeah. her marching orders from the top down. Yeah. But when she speaks off the cuff, she says some very, very dangerous things. Yeah. If you follow the thread to who is actually pulling her strings, it leads to Google, believe it or not. But, uh, mm. you know, she's so stupid as an adult. I mean, what would she think? No response to 9-11 at all, except for maybe the Patriot Act, because uh, Obama managed to politicize the Patriot Act and turn it against his political enemies like Donald Trump and you and I. But uh, if she's this stupid now as an adult, could you imagine how stupid she was at 10 years old when 9-11 happened? She probably was watching oh, cartoons God. at the time. Turn off this news. It's boring. I want to watch SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, it's all right if she was doing that then, but it doesn't seem like she's grown no. since then. That's no, the problem. She has, arrest, she, she has arrested development. She's like that little girl that makes fun of her. You mean she's still watching SpongeBob SquarePants? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Which is a homosexual cartoon, by the way. Oh my uh, gosh! Anyway, she just says something idiotic every week. It's gotten to the point where you don't even want to pay attention to her anymore. But the thing is, they beat you over the head with this woman. And the crazy thing is, Brian, it's not just from the left. Like you see it all over Fox News, Newsmax TV. I was just watching, which. Which is nice. Now you have cable, you get Newsmax TV, by the way, which is awesome. But they had a whole segment on AOC, and I'm like, why are you why are you beating me over the head with this woman? <laughs> you can't oh get away from her. Uh you know? Stop stop the hammering. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like this trying is how to I feel. It's like the insanity of the left, man. It is. I picture them like picking her up by the ankles and physically beating you over the head with her body. Oh God! <laughs> when, no, when I think it's that. more like being. I think it's more like being on like the the craziest roller coaster, and just and and somebody just is not hitting the brakes. They're not shutting the ride down. You've gone around the fiftieth time, and you're just like praying to get off the ride. Well, they say Puerto Rican women are crazy, but I didn't know they were dumb as bricks. I thought they were crazy in a good way. Well, now you know. <laughs> her, her IQ, and CV's right, her IQ definitely hovers around 80. Yep. If oh, that, man. and that's being nice. That's being nice. She's like the female Puerto Rican version of Frank. <laughs> no. Most that, people, nobody knows who Frank <laughs> no, is. No, <laughs> probably most of you something. don't know. It's an inside joke. It's an inside joke. But anyway... Um, I want to get into the next topic, so I'll do the final commercial for you guys. The Bo John Birch Society helped America elect President Reagan in 1980 and President Trump in 2016. And they'll help America re-elect President Trump in 2020. They've rallied the conservative base for over 50 years. Go to JBS.org and join up and receive a good conservative group behind you. JBS has affiliates like the New American American Opinion Foundation, Freedom Project Media, and Freedom Project Academy. Print membership 
is $87 and digital membership is only $47. And it's worth it to go do it. I urge you to go there and get yourself aligned with the John Birch Society. And no, it's not right-wing Nazism. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So listen, this is somebody that we follow, Miss Laura Loomer. She's back in the spotlight. And I don't necessarily know that this is going to go anywhere, guys, but I think the fact that the ball is rolling is a good thing, and, and we'll talk about it right now. So Facebook, with uh, Schmuckerberg, is being asked to pay billions, that's B, with a B, not millions, billions of dollars by Laura Loomer. And she is a conservative journalist who says her life is in danger due to being recently banned from the social network and its sister service, Instagram. Loomer filed a defamation lawsuit in Miami Federal Court Monday, seeking more than $3 billion in punitive damages stemming from Facebook's decision to punt her from its platforms, along with Alex Jones from InfoWars and the Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan, who, that by the way, they just threw him in to look good. That's the only reason they did that. Uh, Mrs. Loomer was among a handful of users booted by Facebook on May 2nd for supposedly violating the company's rules prohibiting dangerous individuals and organizations accused of promoting or engaging in violence or hate. Larry Clayman, a conservative activist and lawyer representing Mrs. Loomer in the lawsuit, claimed that Facebook made malicious, false, and deflammatory statements by labeling his client as dangerous. There is nothing dangerous, violent, or remotely illegal and improper about Mrs. Loomer's conduct, Mr. Clayman wrote in the lawsuit. Uh, Facebook declined to comment on the lawsuit when reached by the Washington Times, and that's what I'm reading this for. Uh, I'll go to CV first on this because he's a big Loomer fan. He says that uh, she's so badass, she has uh, a pair of balls in her name. Yes. <laughs> if you look right? at it, if you look at it, you can see them. Yes, you can see the balls. But um, CV, I've been following Mrs. Loomer for probably over four or five years. I've never seen anything violent or hateful or uh, derogatory coming from her. She makes things uncomfortable for the left. I suppose that is labeled as being hateful now. Yeah. Well, they Facebook, when they, when they booted her off that platform, along with uh, the others that you mentioned, they say, uh, you know, they have community standards on dangerous individuals and organizations, and they're defined as organizations or individuals involved in the following terrorist activity, organized hate, mass or serial murder, human trafficking, or organized violence or criminal activity. And Loomer says she doesn't even come close to any of that definition. And so she has a really great case. You know, defamation is a great case. And uh, I think it is the best way to fight back against these communists. I call them neocoms, not neocons, neocoms. The uh, best way to fight back is legally, because she has a very strong case. And the reason they're aiming so high with $3 billion is so that should there be a settlement, it'll be substantial, a substantial settlement, you know, when you're working with $3 billion. And so it'll set a, it'll set a president, you know, and uh, more power to her. And I think she does have a strong case. Yeah, Brian, you know, CV makes a good point, but I think it would behoove uh, a lot of the conservative voices to get behind Loomer and follow suit. You know, I mean, every conservative voice out there is being shadow banned. We know that from Diamond and Silk. So, you know, maybe get some people like Michael Savage and Laura Ingram. And I know they don't get along well with, the, like, Mark Levin and Michael Savage. But come together, come to the table, put your heads together, and fight back against these monsters. Hey, man, let's put, let's put FOD on that list, too, yeah. man. You know, the amount of times that we've been... We've been censored or they cut our audio when we got rights to the to to play stuff yeah. i mean they play games with every single person that opposes their view they're fascists and uh you know i think the best way to go uh, to for this to really stick like you said is and i'll give i'll give uh laura loomer kudos uh, um kudos uh you know for her to to you know, get an attorney and be able to file this lawsuit 
And really, I mean, three billion, she's really sticking it to them. You know, and, uh, you know, it's it's a number that they're certainly going to, you know, take notice of because if it was three million, they would laugh at it. Right. But it's three, it, you know, it's three billion. So they're not going to laugh at three billion. And I think what would even be better is if, like you said, conservatives that have been disenfranchised by Facebook, whether Everybody. it's being silenced or whether it is ha- being defamed, um, get a class action lawsuit. Let's get a big attorney and get a class action lawsuit. And instead of it being for billions, let's sue for uh, a nice round trillion. Because I don't think Zuckasuck is uh, worth that much money. You, you know, know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to mention CV that they've gotten so emboldened with with uh, squashing our message that YouTube has actually been taking our videos down. Yeah, it took out uh, half of yep. half of ours, and I've been half of our, I've, half I've been of our um, I've been putting the embedded information from huge tube. It's huge people. You, you could do it better than me. <laughs> but that's what they're called. Huge, huge tube. It's called huge tube. It's Uha, Uha, Utah Gun Exchange uh, mm-hmm. organization. That's what. That's where they get the U G E from. But anyway, U G E. Uh, you know, Laura makes a great point when she says that you know she, when she's kicked off of platforms like Twitter and Facebook, uh, she can't defend herself. Uh, she can't defend herself from the many people on there with check marks after their names. Who uh, slander her daily? She can't even defend herself because she's not there to defend herself. That is t- patently not fair, and th- that's her damages right there because it makes her life a living hell, and it, and it, it puts her in danger. You know, it's like it's like a, it's like issuing an intifada against her. Uh, and uh, if you're uh, trying, if you're trying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you that's off. No, okay. I was done. If you're trying to become something in the conservative news media world nowadays it's a lot harder than it was 10 years ago yeah because they're they're quelling any message that you put out there if you're somebody yeah. trying to come up like our show or yeah there are tons of other people that we've had on our program that should be much bigger than they are but they're just not getting the recognition that they would and i've heard people make the argument and i've even heard some conservative voices make the argument well, build a better, better product than Facebook. Reinvent the mousetrap. You can't. You can't because everything is owned and uh, trafficked through by Google. Yep. Google owns the market. So if you're a conservative site like BitChute, or I won't even, they're not a conservative site. What I mean to say is if you're a site that allows people to promote free speech and to exercise their First Amendment rights, they're not going to let you come up with an app. So you could create uh, a, a site like BitChute or a site like HugeTube, UGE Tube, yeah, or any of these, and they won't. It won't get as big as the others because they've cornered the market. Brian, that's a very hard thing to fight back against. Well, and and you make a great point of of saying cornered because. Who else could start up and, you know, and let's think about what our country really, uh, I mean, to go back to Beto, what our country was founded on, you know, and that was, and that was free enterprise. I mean, you know, early on in in our country's, um, you know, birth, you know, you could, if you wanted to be a farrier, you could be a farrier. If you wanted to be a black, uh, a blacksmith and, and forge, you know, tools, you could do that. You could start your own business. You know, I mean, yep. look at some of the look at some of the men uh, and women who have shaped America. And uh, I mean, it's just kind of what we've always been about. And that's free, free trade, free business um, and uh, being able to have that free enterprise uh, in our country. You know, you have a, a, a company like Google who is so big yeah. and I mean keep in mind I always say this you know Rockefeller was huge and you had some really uh, big oil companies that got broken up um, 
you know, way back, uh, way back when in the in the 1900s, because they were monopolies. I mean, they, I right. mean, they were just they these small oil companies and gas stations that maybe had five or six gas stations in an area would just come in. I mean, they wouldn't be able to compete, and they would just get bought up, and it was easier for them to sell and have something than to stay in business and end up with nothing, to go bankrupt. Because remember, when you went bankrupt. Back in the in the late eighteen hundreds or nineteen hundreds, uh, there was nobody bailing you out. There was no there was no chapter eleven and chapter thirteen then. Okay, so when you went belly up, you lost it all. And so you know you have a company like Google. They just there's nobody that compete with them. That's there's right. no one that could compete with them. They just they stomped the little guy out. And I'm sorry, yeah. but they got to be broken up. That's a good point. Yeah, they do. You know how's how's um you know Bitshoot or Gab with only so much capital going to stand up against these billion dollar companies? They can't. You have to have President Trump get involved. Um, yep. I don't know that he plans on doing that. I know he's voiced his opinion on these things, and I'm glad he is doing that. But the problem is that there are some shady people in the administration, and who I'm talking about is Jared Kushner. He's personal friends with the jackass from Twitter and uh, and the jackass that runs Amazon. So there, there, there are people in that administration that, you know, go up to president trump and say you know let's just let it go and the problem is with the more that they they uh quell conservative voices and keep us down there th the likelihood of him being reelected is is lesser because he he was elected because of his great presence on the internet i'm sorry that was part of it a big part of it the man knows how to work the crowd through the keyboard like no one before. He's even he's done it better than Barack Obama did in 08 and it, you know, he still does it today. But the the problem is that they have been taking people off the president's account. Brian said it happened to him on on Twitter, right Brian? They took you off uh, yes. from following the president himself. I, so he's got to yeah. do something. Well, I, I, cause I, I just, you know, I hadn't seen anything in a long time and I'm going like, what the heck, you know? And, and I, yeah, I went to the president's uh, Twitter account and I was not following him anymore. And I'm going like, wait a second, you know? Yeah. You know, Trump, the Trump needs four more years because he's only one man. And although he doesn't sleep very much and although he's very energetic and his heart is in the right place. You know, he's not like God who can hear everybody's prayers at once and, and be able to uh, sift through it all. You know, he's got a lot on his plate. He's doing a hell of a lot. And he'll get to, he'll get to the big, every big issue, one at a time. You know, he's, he's juggling well, a lot at the same time. Well, the problem is, like I said, the re-election is going to rely on these social media networks a lot more than you think. Well, that's a good now, point. Now, it might... It might not. It it's probably not going to uh, uh, get in his way of being elected because I think he's so savvy with what he does. Like I said, but they are trying to do that. It, it, it came under uh, Project Veritas came up with the video of basically someone that works inside Google saying that yes, we're actively trying to thwart the re-election of Trump. That was out, and nobody's talking about that, which drives me crazy. I know we talked about it last week, but no one else has talked about it. That's crazy to me. And the, Google's offices themselves said they're actively trying to uh, prevent President Trump from being re-elected. Yeah, but he does these giant rallies. Sometimes he does two, three, and uh, up until the uh, close to the election, he was doing up to four. He got to Michigan at like three o'clock in the morning, and Ted Nugent had to warm up the crowd waiting for his plane to come in. I mean, he's a fighter. Even without the internet, he'll do what he has to do to win. He'll do everything he has to do to win, even if he had no internet. Yeah, it, it's not really my point that I'm trying to get to, though. You, you're missing my my point. My point is, eventually, 
eight years ends. We have to continue the. We can't have another Barack Obama come around the bend oh, after no, President Trump. No, absolutely not. Yep. No, okay. he has to, he has to can, fix the internet. That's true. He has to well, fix it. Yes. Well, I think the thing that people need to to take away is this: once he is reelected for a second term. Then he can really get to work, mm. and, pe- and people go, "Well, you know, come on, you know." So, so for the first four years was nothing. Well, no, yeah. the first four years was beating and battling the Democrats at their game, and once the Russian collusion was over, and the, and Mueller has gone bye bye, and this whole thing gets exposed for for how they um, basically made up the whole thing um and he gets reelected that's when he can i mean yeah once that's all out of the way and that's exposed there i mean what are the democrats really gonna have <laughs> i mean if if trump really you know plays the game right he's gonna have four years of really no challenge because they're gonna lose the house the americans are fed up mm-hmm. they are they were given the house back in 18 because of, you know, a bunch of nonsense in my opinion. Um, but because I think Americans were buying into the whole, uh, Russian collusion and this whole Mueller thing. Now that it's come out that it's a bunch of BS, I think Americans are going to say, you know something? Wow. You guys pulled the wool over my eyes. Nope. Nope. You're done. And I think you're going to see, we're going to take back the house. We're going to, we're going to gain in the Senate Mm-hmm. And I think that we're really going to have four years of unchecked um, prosperity. Yeah. I agree with you. I I, I, I wasn't making the argument that President Trump's not going to win again. He is. My argument was that we got to fix the Internet, like CV just said. we got to fix the Internet. And I do agree with you, Brian, that the House and the Senate will be coming back because the left is so cuckoo that <laughs> people are like, what did we do? So... Oh, um, I agree with you there. Yeah, anyway, and if you, and if you think Trump is badass now, wait till twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's going to be like when Barry became a true communist in his second reign. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Trump, Trump's going to be, you know, Trump's going to be gunning oh, and running yeah. and gunning and coming down with that MAGA hammer. But listen, um, before we go, I just wanted to dedicate the show to Keith Scott Krasinski. Uh, he passed away on July fourth. Uh, my aunt Betty's son. He was a good man, 46 years old. He was a fisherman, and I just want to say the fisherman's prayer for him before we go. I've finished life's chores assigned to me, so put me on a boat headed out to sea. Please send along my fishing pole, for I've been invited to the fishing hole, where every day is a day to fish, to fill your heart with every wish. Don't worry or feel sad for me. I'm fishing with the master of the sea. We will miss each other for a while, but you will come and bring your smile. That won't be long, you will see, till we're together, you and me. To all those that think of me, be happy as I go out to sea. For others wonder why I'm missing, just tell them that I've gone fishing. All right, everybody, have a good night from Freedom on Deck and FOD Overdrive, and we'll talk to you on Sunday. Good night, gentlemen. Friday night, will. Be drinking Manish Shevitz Going out to terrorize Goyam Stop and shake it Screwing chicks As long as we're home